The Yang Gang has spread all across the country, and this isn't a gang of rowdy youths revving their motorbikes and harassing shopkeeps, but rather a group of math-loving folks that want to prop up shopkeeps and help the youth find their dreams. They're the Andrew Yang supporters. Uh, Yang has brought the idea of universal basic income to the front and center of the debate stage, and this has let some of his Democratic colleagues speechless, like Mayor Pete, who was stunned that somebody actually has a plan to help the people instead of making them false promises and demolishing property. Andrew Yang is currently the only candidate running for president that advocates for a universal basic income and addresses the reality of automation. And this is a real problem for the establishment. Because if we're ready to admit to ourselves that corporations are looking to increase their bottom lines through the use of non-human workers they don't have to pay, how are we going to use the immigrant as a scapegoat? How are we going to fear monger, you know, get the working class fighting each other and enrich the bloated pockets of the elites? Did Andrew Yang even think about the CEO when he started talking about this idea that would prop up the working class, push innovation? without the limitations of money? Andrew Yang is offering people a flat income of $1,000 a month for them to do whatever they want to do with, right? And on the Joe Rogan podcast, or as I like to call it, how the debate should be done, Yang mentioned that this would be $1,000 total you'd get from the federal government. So if you got $250 from Social Security and uh, $250 from food stamps, then you'd get the rest of it, the $500 from Yang's UBI idea. So at this moment, if you're getting any sort of government assistant, UBI basically acts as supplemental income. Now, I'm not particularly a huge fan of this version of UBI. I think we should look at what the average baseline for social programs are and start from there. I do understand that if you're trying to introduce the idea of UBI to folks, this does make sense, and I do hope that's what Yang's intentions are. This could be a jumping off point to addressing UBI in a country this large with so many varying factors. But we can't address the factors if we don't try something first. So with that, <coughs> with that in mind, I do applaud Andrew Yang to bringing this idea to the light and actually try to implement this in any way at all. <coughs> Yang addresses his reason for pushing forward on the idea of universal basic income it is because automation is coming whether we like it or not. And those that back the idea of a federal jobs guarantee that offered guaranteed employment to everyone that is willing and able to work misses the glaring reality of automation in a variety of industries that is going to leave a lot of people without jobs. Universal basic income addresses this problem and ensures that these folks don't have to get destitute, wind up homeless, or turn to a life of crime. Or worse yet, a life of governmental internships. No one's job should be getting coffee for Mitch McConnell and separating his thin, horrifying lips and pouring the hot liquid into his bill-preventing gullet. That that, that should go against the Eighth Amendment. What universal basic income doesn't address, though, is the rights of the automaton. Right? Well, what about these robots? Uh, how, how do we pay them? I, I mean, in oil? Uh, oh, shit. If that's the case, then we're just going to re-incentivize the fossil fuel industry to start more wars and dig into more areas that we don't belong in. Right? I'm sure if humanity is mature enough to deal with this problem, you know, we, we perhaps we can be mature enough to address the idea of paying robots if we can address the idea of UBI. You know, then maybe we can figure out how to compensate these automatons. Eventually, there are going to be sex bots, and, and your hot load isn't going to be an acceptable form of payment. And, and let's be honest, it, it never really was to begin with. America has an obsession with this need for a job. 
So much so that due to income disparity and increased poverty, people have to get two jobs to survive. But instead of looking at this as a bad thing, people just talk about how great it is that unemployment is down, but no one is really asking whether these are fulfilling jobs or even necessary jobs. The phrase job creation has become very popular over the years and mix that with our obsession with needing jobs, making up jobs for people to do is considered a job. I mean, where do we draw the line at this point? Universal basic income addresses these notions of being able to find meaningful work. It addresses being able to take risks, innovate, <clears throat> innovate, and if you're a parent, then you're rewarded for raising your kid. And I know there's probably a bunch of people saying, oh, Krish, you know it'd just be a bunch of assholes learning to play an instrument or think that they're funnier than you or go into the arts. Unlikely. People are terrified of public speaking and performing. And it's not like the arts are the only thing people are passionate about. There's a lot of people that are passionate about working on cars, engineering, medicine to save lives, improve the systems to help people. And yes, there are going to be some people who do nothing if they got $1,000 a month. In fact, that's a huge reason that people are against this idea. Look, I'm pretty sure that's an excuse given by the people who do exactly nothing if given the opportunity. These are the people that took the movie Office Space way too seriously. And when they experimented with UBI in Canada in the 70s, about 13% of people didn't go back to work. That means way less than a quarter of the people receiving UBI spent their way watching awful spent their day watching awful television and getting cheeto dust on their genitals. Okay, that's not that bad if we make this happen for the entire species, right? Over 75% of us would be building a better future for each other. According to Yang, most of the people that are not going back to work are new mothers or younger people pursuing higher education. So that means in half these cases, the Cheeto dust is from a child in their terrible twos that doesn't understand boundaries yet. Now, the bigger question remains, how do you pay for this? Even at $1,000 a month, Yang is looking at approximately $3 trillion a year. I mean, that's not even going to fund like 10% of a regime change war. You're, you're, you're going to need a lot more money if, you're, if you want to you know, start a war for oil. Right? Yang's idea would basically be to make tech companies and big corporations actually pay their taxes since they would be the ones responsible for pushing forward with automation and displacing the American worker. Universal basic income starts the conversation about what our basic needs are. Food, water, shelter, health, and I'd also add communication, which would be the internet. This means that th th these are provided to us by a government that is running on a compassionate economy instead of one that punches you in the face and blames you for getting blood on its white carpet made out of rhino tusks makes us think about what should and shouldn't have a price tag on it. At this current moment, this economy just sees most of, us, most of the people as meat bags with a price tag. I mean, where do we draw the line? Well, the line drawn by the pharmaceutical industry is about the cost of that meat bag. UBI and the pursuit of, of monetizing your passions can make us a far more productive and happier society. And if that's the case, how can the research and development department at Pfizer come up with different ways to remind you how pointless your existence is and, and, and how their pills will make you forget about the garbage fire of your life? Well, the answer is they can't. You know, and Big Pharma has put in so much research into how truly to bum you the fuck out and a ton of development into poisoning American community from sea to depressing sea.
Yang's idea uh, on ending the drug war came from the Portugal and Netherlands model of legalizing all drugs and implement safe spaces for recreational use of some of the harder drugs. I mean, this is a radical idea that a lot of the other candidates are not really addressing. In Portugal right now, you can go to a center and get hooked up with harder drugs and have a professional administer, administer it to you safely. Okay, they take addiction seriously as, as uh, you know, as something a person needs to heal from rather than get a criminal offense. You know, deaths using heroin in Portugal have dropped significantly. More importantly, if we are going to legalize all drugs, then we should be educating people on what they are, what they can and can't do. We should be honest and not be using a Nancy Reagan era fear tactic to determine the legality of these drugs. Well, except if you're big pharma, you know, I mean, come on, if we start legalizing drugs, what will Purdue Pharma and Pfizer do? You know, you know, what, what, what are they going to, uh, what are they going to willingly poison the American people with? Okay, Yang is willing to hold these companies accountable and put them through the criminal justice system. I hope it's the same system that puts nonviolent, peace-loving pot smokers in the same jail cell with mass murderers. Look, mass murderers like the big pharma should be in a cell with their own. You know, talking shop about psychopathy freely and openly with each other. That's more than what we can say for the drinking business, right? No one really talks about your limits on drinking or how it could affect you. You just see these movies and ads and pop culture references that celebrate being a hot mess on Friday and Saturday and how thirst can really affect your Thursdays. You don't really have to be an expert in alcohol to be a bartender, right? You can take a six-hour course on making the perfect martini and and there's not really a course on the proper way to hold someone's hair back as they puke on their shoes. And, and there really should be. You, you, you really should know the ins and outs of alcohol if you're going to be a bartender, right? It's already, I mean, it's a tough job. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not a tough job, but you, you could learn more about it. You could science it up a little bit more. That's all I'm saying. You know, Administer, having a safe space for you to deal with your alcoholism with professionals that can, that can put you in a bubble as you have a drunk blackout rage, you know, where, where somebody grabs your cell phone and puts it in a case where you can't reach it and you just cry uh, about, about how you, you haven't been loved properly. I mean, that's, that's what bars probably should be. A recognized weakness in Andrew Yang is how much of a DC outsider he is, which most people think is an endearing quality. Sometimes it's really hard to understand what a DC insider like Mitch McConnell is saying because he's got so many lobbyist cocks just lodged in the back of his throat. You know, we'd be able to make out what his goals for letting the American people down are if he just said one of these cocks free. And this is why he needs an intern for coffee. Okay, McConnell is so much of an insider that he won't separate his lips for anyone except special interests. One of Yang's ideas is to move certain departments out of DC and reinstate them into middle America. This would mean that there would be more federal jobs and opportunities in the center of the country. And this would mean that more businesses can partner directly with certain departments in certain parts of the country and have a healthy influx of people in those cities that are being overlooked and forgotten by most Americans. This would help figure out how to actually implement UBI in a country this large. If middle America becomes a bit more bustling and hip, like the coasts, then the cost of living would reach an average across this country. Right now, a studio apartment in New York City doesn't cost the same as Cheyenne, Wyoming, or San Francisco. Certain cities have real estate that is astronomically higher than other areas. If middle America got more opportunities, this would make the cost of living pretty much all the same. 
Now, this would mean that realtors wouldn't have their commission-based jobs or their face on a bus bench and would probably need a little bit of UEI to get them through. Now, Yang did say that if you work in America, you shouldn't be poor. And thus, his UBI would mean that the federal minimum wage doesn't go up too much higher than it is. This is because he says that the companies can increase minimum wage and then decrease full-time workers and benefits. Now, again, this is an aspect of his UBI plan that I'm not a fan of, but I'm hoping this is a way to introduce the concept rather than throwing into the ocean of universal basic income and hoping we can swim. And this is a problem that can be fixed by regulating laws on the private sector on saying that they can't make these sort of trade-offs like that wouldn't benefit the American worker. But this is what Andrew Yang was good at. His company, Venture for America, would spend time training college graduates and placing them in cities that needed their talents. Whether it be IT or banking or law, they get paid to learn and partner with a startup or an entrepreneur in a city that wasn't D.C., Chicago, New York, or San Francisco. That This, this way, they help the cities in need and through its flourishing, they probably would get shot at way less. And at this point, the establishment media has no idea what to do with this guy, right? Even when they have him on their shows, they can't really describe him very well. They keep describing what he's doing as giving money away. But there's no issue with the government giving money away to elites and large corporations with tax breaks, right? Or, or letting them hide their monies overseas. Look, if a billionaire's money has seen the beach more often than the American worker, you really need to rethink your economy. Even when he was on The View, the faux progressive Joy Behar asked him a few questions uh, that a conservative would. You know, questions like, wouldn't people just stop working? And Yang handled it pretty well by pointing out that people would have a chance to follow their passions, take care of their kids, innovate, and re-stimulate the economy. And the conservative Meghan McCain almost lost her head when reading some of his radical policies. So let's take a look at Yang's policies. Yang believes that one of the ways we can fund UBI is through a value-added tax. This would tax tech, com tech companies that are benefiting from automation, AI, and algorithms, which then help the e consumers get more wealth to buy more of their shit. This tax leading into UBI would give people an opportunity to have both legs to stand on, and it gives people some boots to have straps to pull themselves up by. On his website, Yang talks about reutilizing the military to help countries that are affected by climate change. With the rise of hurricanes every year, longer dry seasons, and more asshole senators bringing snowballs into congressional sessions, climate change has become a large and widely debated issue. Some Pacific islands are due to disappear in the next few years, which means that we might create Atlantis, right? And who says you can't manifest things into reality? Okay, we did it, guys. Okay, we made Aquaman relevant again. Good job, humans, right? I mean, that that was the goal, right? That right? That was the, that was the goal, right? Look, this is probably going to create a bigger influx of climate refugees if these islands and coastal countries are drowning. So Yang's plan is to use the American military to rebuild the infrastructure of these countries and help them deal with climate change. The problem with that is that the American military isn't particularly equated as a humanitarian organization. They're usually considered to be harbingers of death and destruction with a strict color palette of red, white, and blue. I doubt sending in a drone that fires wrenches instead of missiles is going to be helpful. Trading Hellfire missiles with Hellfire construction isn't particularly great. Okay, I am exaggerating, but perhaps instead of reinventing the military-industrial complex to the humanitarian-industrial complex, 
we can just reallocate funds to fixing the infrastructure of this country first and then using what we learn on our streets to take it to the streets of these islands and other countries. Andrew Yang also wants to create a better curriculum for schools. This includes teaching kids financial skills, interview skills, positive psychology, time management, and a healthy use of technology. And this is great. This would mean that less of the future of the UBI beneficiaries, beneficiaries would have genitals covered in Cheeto dust. Unless, of course, they plan for it. You know, if they, if they included it into their schedules to have a, a, a period of time that, that has Cheeto covered genitals, then, then that's, then that's fine. I'm, you know, it's just, we're just, we're, we're all just glad that you planned for that sort of stuff. We're all just happy that you planned. A point of contention I have with this grand list of policies on his website is the lack of real foreign policies. Now, don't get me wrong, he does have a lot of dense information about how American wars have blown through their funds like a 20-year-old frat boy with a pill and booze addiction charging daddy's credit card like there's no tomorrow, but there's no concrete plans on how to deal with this military expansion. And this could be the downside of Yang. His domestic policies are pretty good, but he's lacking in the foreign affairs division. Regardless of this oversight that I hope he can overcome, he does have more recreational policies too, like making taxes fun. Yang wants to call it Revenue Day with a bunch of celebrations and activities where you can contribute 1% of your taxes to a future project and seeing how things fare up for the next year. This is the governmental equivalent of Casual Fridays. Like, it shouldn't be a big deal because it's casual, because it should be casual. You know, taxes should be fun. You should want to contribute to help your country instead of thinking we're being screwed over and robbed. Being that he's in the tech world, Yang also believes in data rights. This is the new century, and we have tech companies manipulating our democracy with the Cambridge Analytica debacle and how Google blocked Tulsi Gabbard after the first democratic debates. Data is a product, eh, but it really shouldn't be. So this means that we need to know what our rights actually are when it's dealt with data and how our data is being used, or in some cases, why we're being blocked. Far too often, these tech companies block sites and give some vague reason that really doesn't apply to them. Earlier this year, 800 independent media sites were taken off of Facebook and Twitter for quote-unquote inauthentic behavior. I mean, what does that even mean? There wasn't really an a answer except using buzzwords like synergistics. The one other complaint I have about his website is the format using columns in his policy section. It feels like I'm reading a newspaper, okay? It's a format that makes me feel like, like I'm, I'm an elderly person and I'm getting ever closer to death. I mean, I get it. It's more meant for a mobile platform since he's got some techie friends helping him out, but come on, Mr. Yang, you gotta fix some of that formatting. Andrew Yang believes in all of the progressive ideals uh, from diminishing student loans, Medicare for all, body cameras for police, and a bunch more. His flagship idea is helping him stand out in the debates, and it's why I'm really interested in him, and quite frankly, why he's my top three candidate to vote for in the primaries. And despite being from the tech world and the entrepreneurship world, Yang seems far more genuine than the candidates the DNC wants to push on us. His plan reshapes capitalism to be a system not run on competition, but on compassion. And compassion moves us forward.